Hey, so um, I figured I'd make a quick like demo video of my Action Man add-on, which is basically like an add-on that lets you manage uh, like a big uh, like big number of con action action constraints in Blender. Because when you like do bone-based facial ring facial rigs, you you do end up having like a very big amount of action constraints. Uh, because like the rig that I currently have, I have like 120 bones or so on the face and each of those bones ends up having, yeah, like maybe if like between 20 and 50 action constraints, so multiply by 120, that's, that's just a lot of action constraints. So you do want to, to have like something that lets you manage that and that's what my add-on does so uh i'll demo that in the, like a very simple environment for now so i have those two bones this one will be the animated one and this second one will be the controller for it so um i want to go into the um dope sheet editor and then go into action the action editor uh, it doesn't have any action for now because I haven't like made any animation. I'll just force that to go from frame zero to 10 because that makes things a bit easier. It's not required at all, but just like, that's how I do it usually. Um, and I'll just do a very simple animation. Uh, first frame, frames at zero and then it goes one on the y-axis and rotates 90 degree or well, negative 90 degree on its x-axis. So that's the animation. Um, and then you want, uh, if you go on the N panel here, you'll have the, uh, the action man panel and you just want to click that manage button which forces, which tells Action Man to manage that add on that way you can like filter you, because you, you'll probably end up having a lot of actions that you don't want Action Man to end up managing. So you, you have that security over, over everything. Um, so this first part of the add on is very similar to like the actual action constraints. Uh, panel so you have your target which is the same as this so you can t set that to any object that you have in the scene in this instance I'd only have one armature and this ar armature has two bones so I'll set it to use the controller which you could do that here as well um, this will just be filled in with the current like action uh, this from target corresponds to that part here. It's default, uh, it defaults to um, local space because that's what you'll want pretty much every time, if not total, if not, yeah, every time. Um, so yeah, I'll use that, that works fine for me. So I'll move that one unit to the side on the x-axis. So I want to reflect that here. It goes from zero to one. I will uncheck that for now and I will explain what it does a bit later in the video. Uh, so that zero to one activation range is the target range here and the action range will be, uh, is calculated automatically based on where the first keyframe is and where the last keyframe is. So if I hit apply now, it creates the action constraint. I'll just remove that one that's useless. And goes from frame zero to 10. If I move the last keyframe here and hit apply, the action range goes from zero to five. So I'll move that back to 10, uh, hit apply, it goes back to 10. Okay. So um, when I animated that bone, um, I just like keyframed all the channels and that's a bit messy because really only those three channels are used and that's it. So Blender like shows you when 
uh, animation doesn't change and it has those uh, black bars or like orange one if you have the keyframe selected. But I don't think you can just delete them easily. So this clean action button does just that. It finds uh, useless keyframes and removes them. Well, uh, when I say useless, I mean uh, keyframes that like if a channel has the same value all the way from the beginning to the end, that's considered useless and it gets removed. That's pretty really much it. Uh, okay, so now that I've hit apply, this moving this controller, which again is the one I linked here, and is uh, ends up being linked on the action constraint on that bone. It just plays the action constraint, uh, the action rather. So yeah, uh, you have those two um, delete constraint button. This one, because um, you might want to have like two bones, for example. Uh, those two bones might uh, be animated in different ways. There you go. Uh, they have their actions. Uh, but like, let's say, oh, like for example, for like for some reason, you don't want the this one to be included in the action anymore. So you remove the, you remove its keyframes. Uh, so those are its keyframes. I don't want that. Okay, and I delete the keyframes, but the bone is still green, meaning it still has the action constraint, even though it just doesn't do anything. So this uh, delete useless button gets useful because you can now just click it and it will remove constraints on all the bones that are in the armature that um, are not affected by the current, the action that you have loaded here. That's one still uh, keeps it. And if I undo a bit, the delete all, just delete the constraints on all the bones. Yeah. And that one is green because it has a, like a limit location constraint that uh, locks the bone in its uh, activation range. That's pretty much it. So, okay. I'll delete that bone because it's not useful. Apply the action again. And now we're back to, to here. And to demonstrate why you want the split transformation being checked most, if not all the time, I will just duplicate this action by clicking that button. And uh, so the first action is applied have one uh, action constraint on that bone here and uh, this action doesn't have one yet because I didn't click apply when I duplicated it kept all the settings here I just just need to click apply again and okay okay that's a tiny bug but never mind that's not a big problem so uh, what you would expect from from that, like that bone, if I move that bone to like its uh, full activation range, you would probably expect uh, this one to move double the range. Uh, I'll do that on the side, so double the range instead of just stopping here. And then the bone is currently like facing that way, so it would rotate once and twice. So you would expect the bone to end up Yeah. Right. And uh, as I'll activate this, you'll notice it doesn't do that at all. It ends up here. And um, if I show the armatures uh, axis, you can you'll be able to like understand why it does that. Uh, 
I'll set that to fully and check that bone. Uh, there you go. So what Blender does is basically evaluates the first action first. So it puts that bone into this position. Um, and it evaluates its translation and rotation. So if you remember, the bone has its animation on its Z axis. So if I do that, I might not be able to see that here. No, I'm not. But if I play the animation, you'll see that it moves um, negative one unit on the Z axis. It's Z axis, not the world's Z axis. Um, and okay, so I have that here. Uh, and then the second action, which is again just a copy of that one, will move again on its z axis now, which doesn't point in the same direction as it used to. So now that the z axis point points upward, moving it uh, by one in the negative uh, direction will move the, bo the, the bone downward and rotate it again. So you end up being here when you'd expect to, to, to get here. And the solution to that is instead of evaluating the translation and rotation of the first action, and only then evaluating the translation and rotation of the second action, you want to evaluate the translation of the first action and the translation of the second action first. And after that, evaluate the rotation. So it would uh, indeed move once, twice, and then rotate twice. Instead of moving once, rotating, moving a second time, rotating again. And what that um, split transformation checkbox does is exactly that. So I'll hit apply. You'll see that instead of having um, one armature con armature action uh, action constraint, I have two: one that has the translation, and one that has the rotation. But since I only did that on one action, it basically behaves exactly the same because it again evaluates the translation and rotation of the first one, and then the translation rotation of the second one. But now if I do that on the second action here, yeah. transform, apply, uh, Blender didn't evaluate the viewport, but that's just not really a bug, but yeah, a tiny problem. Uh, if I select that bone, you'll see that it has the translation first and then the translation of the other action. action and only then the rotation of the two actions. The, uh, I'll just show you what it looks like now. And yes, we do get to that position and rotation. Um, the actual order of the translation uh, constraint doesn't matter. I could have it set up in that way and like the rotation in that way and you'll see like it just doesn't matter because like adding translation together like if you just add uh, one translation like that one like that and let's say one like that it's exactly the same as if you translated like that then moved uh, like that and then moved again like this so the, the order of like the translation doesn't matter at all the order of the rotation don't matter again but yeah it's making sure the translation of everything gets evaluated first and then the rotation. Um, I think that's it for what the add-on does. I'll just like demo uh, this problem I just showed in an actual facial rig. Uh, I'll just save that here and open this. So I'll just put it to render because it looks good. Um, at the moment, I have basically uh, two actions, one that, 
all the bones you see scattered on the face are the bones that I manually animate. So if I go to this section, for example, select all the bones, you'll see I have all these bones animated. Uh, and just playing the animation does that. That's just like manually animated from that pose to that pose. And that's pretty much it. Um, so I have this section that goes out. I have one that goes up like that. I tend to like uh, overdo the movement. That way the animator has more range to work with. But like you would probably not never go past this. It doesn't really matter if that doesn't look great. Um, okay, so uh, this controller is the one that's used uh, on the two actions uh, target here. And moving it on the side uh, pulls the lips there. Moving it up pulls them upwards because it's just playing that action. Uh, I have the x-axis mirror checked so it does it on both sides but yeah. If I uncheck it I can do it just on that side. The problem is with that is that um, like I was saying the first action which I think is the corner out gets evaluated and then the up gets evaluated. So If I combine them together I get this very ugly result. Uh, I have this curve and this gap here that looks awful. And I don't have control over that at all if I don't split the channels of the actions. If I do split them, however, which I can do by just checking that checkbox, splitting them, going to the other action, splitting them again and now if I move that and move it up it behaves in a like, much more natural way. If I check the X mirror you'll see the difference between both is huge. Yeah, I go from a very quirky weird thing to something that doesn't necessarily look good because well I couldn't like again control how it looked at all before that so now that I do have the control over it I can make I can change like this section and this section to oops, sorry to to make sure both were good together which I couldn't do before at all um, I will do the same on the uh, right side of the face. And if I just like select that bone, for example, you will see that that's all the action constraint it, it had. And now that I split some of it, um, the translation of the ones I split are evaluated first, then the rotation and scale, and then all the ones that are not split. Uh, you would need to split those as well, as well, at least. Yeah, I guess you would need to split all of those. Uh, yeah, so now that I've split them, I can uh, hide the bones and just move that. And I get like a lot more natural result out of it. And yeah, I think that's a good overview of the of the add-on and the problems it solves. Um, if you do want to use it, it's free. Uh, it's on my GitHub. I'll have a, a link in the description of the video. Uh, yeah, as long as you give me feedback, uh, not feedback. I mean uh, credit. Um, you can give me feedback if you want, but if you give me credit, like you can use it free of charge. I think it's under the MIT license. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.